Uh, the reaction speed that they have in those moments uh, might be better applied to other areas, but you know, it is what it is. Some stuff, I guess, people could improve on a little bit attitude-wise, but the guys who have done that are the guys we're seeing in the Collegiate Smash Showdown for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think keeping a strong mentality is super important overall in Smash, of course, but especially in a team format like this where your own individual morale is going to be reflected in the whole team's roster, right? No, for sure. Yeah, I, I'm i definitely one of those people who struggle in a cruise format. You know, it just it was the pressure. Like, you'd feel like, oh, I can't believe I missed that one thing. I'm letting people down. Like, whereas if I'm playing for myself, it's like, whatever, win or lose, I, I just want to kind of do my best. So it's, I always am really impressed whenever I meet or play with people who are like, bro, it gets me pumped. Like I, I love hearing my team cheer for me. So I'm sure that, like I said before, these are the kind of guys who feel that way if they're able to make it this far. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like one of the secret ingredients for success to get this far in a, a format of this nature. And we're going to take a look at the full rosters. Oh, never mind. We're actually going to take a look at some gameplay. It's going to be Ali J and Heartstrings coming up first. So, Ali J, this guy, he's been on the team for a long time for Tamu, and he's quite strong with Falco. Definitely puts up big numbers whenever possible. And I like starting strong uh, in response to Heartstrings starting, right? Of course, it was double blind, but like they did see Heartstrings start against UMD last time. So, they just want to put as much of a dent into his stocks as possible. No, absolutely. Make, makes a ton of sense and always a pretty solid matchup uh, in Falco versus Sheik. I really like uh, what I've seen so far from Heartstrings. I got this like shield poke nair in that situation previously to knock uh, Ali J off the edge, really showing that the, kind of the play is tight. But that was a beautiful ASCI tech down to escape the, the dash attack. So really, really good stuff. Like you said, Ali J, a really strong player. All right, we'll see if he's able to do what he has to do here against Heartstrings, though, because so far it's just been the Heartstrings show. Yep, another stock down with the needles off stage. Relentless with that edge guard. Yeah, one of the things I find as a Falco player the most is everything about melee is very momentum based, but Falco in particular feels like the kind of character where if you're not running them over, you're kind of getting run over. And it's not always the case, but like it does feel like if someone's good at shutting you down, you just can't get things started. And it feels like Heartstrings has that a bit right now, you know? I totally agree. He's so volatile for better or for worse. For right now, it's looking like the worst end of it, but. There's still a chance. As long as I think they get two stocks right here, then Tamu's in good shape. They also, of course, have a set to play with coming from the winner's bracket. Yeah, no, and that can be a big factor, especially in terms of, you know, nerves. Anytime you're in a grand final situation, you don't want to mess up. If you have that kind of wiggle room, that can be good. Again, it really is about mentality. Sometimes people like playing from behind. It really depends. But uh, LJ keeping it respectful, this grab could be trouble, though goes right into the up air. Good recognition by Heartstrings. I love that tag, by the way. Just as a quick aside, one of my favorite tags in Smash. Yeah, I, I agree, actually. It, it's like we've been seeing a lot of kind of funny tags, silly tags. Heartstrings is someone who I think thought the tag through, you know, cares about that esports <laughs> branding. And, and it's, it's just a cool tag, and it's one that is very original. I, I, I haven't seen it personally in any other esports, so that's always fun. Oh, ho, ho. even on the uh, neutral getup right there, just going right from crouch to grab. Heartstrings is so on point with his reactions. Love oh, yeah. that shield here. Double things to uh, set up the reactions in a better way, like the wave dash back to counter that kind of very slight DI to make it a bit harder to react to the tech in place. So really, really smart, high level play from Heartstrings there. Yeah, the reaction tech chase is not just about reacting. It's also, oh, oh the net play Falco. The net play Falco classic. That screen went black. I didn't see Falco die. Man, that that needle, that little single needle, I think it was, to just set up a situation for an edge guard. Um, again, what makes Sheik so cool? Because, uh, you know, it's just that that split second awareness to change the situation into a losing one for Falco. Really, really, really good stuff. Hard strings. Always keeping his head on straight in these high pressure situations. It's like, you know what? I could very well could lose another stock here, which would be a big blow to my team. You know what? I'm just going to clutch up, focus up, and get it done. No, yeah, definitely a, a closer to say the least, but also why it's so powerful to start with heartstrings, you know, just uh, taking away the momentum, um, bringing it back into Michigan's favor. 
Um, and now they have to decide, do we want to throw one of our other strong players or do we want to kind of throw some of the weaker ones and just sort of chip away, maybe get another SD or something like we saw in the previous set to kind of swing a bit of momentum in our favor. That's one of the things about Melee I find really interesting is like you can kill yourself, which if you play a lot of Smash games, you're used to, but like in other fighting games, like you can't just like accidentally throw away your whole health bar, you know? So it's an interesting part of the game. Yeah, definitely something I've made light of on commentary before. It's like, man, you don't have to get hit and especially not a bunch of times to lose a stock in Smash. And, you know, then there's edge guards and and stuff that could really uh, rewrite the script on how much durability you think you have left in the match. So, of course, this is why Melee is so fun to watch, right? It, it's just constantly a roller coaster. The adrenaline is always in your blood, whether you're playing, spectating, commentating, who knows? Yeah, it definitely, it creates situations where momentum can shift so suddenly. And obviously no one's sitting at home going, I really hope they SD, at least in the sense of like, we want the best set possible. But it is fun to kind of watch just those tiny mistakes um, add up and, and lead to huge momentum shifts. I think it it's what makes it, you know, a really fun game, but sometimes also an intimidating game. You know, if you're watching at home and maybe you're not as used to Melee or looking to kind of get into it, uh it definitely is still super super rewarding i don't want to paint melee as like oh you make one mistake the whole game's over we're going to see both of these players uh coming up do a bunch of things right and a bunch of things wrong and i feel like that's what makes it so good because you can just keep improving there's still so much to do it's far from solved yeah absolutely i think the really punishing nature of the game makes it feel even more rewarding when you start eliminating those errors from your gameplay and you know you do get to play on on all four stocks as well as possible etc like even just losing while playing to the best of your ability feels super super nice in this game no for sure yeah i think yeah it just it just also provides opportunity you know you can be down a couple stocks and think hey like there are ways to kind of find openings there are ways to turn it around I know I do hear a bit of Dreamland music in my ear, so I'm assuming that's a button warmer we got going and we're going to be transitioning into a match shortly. I can hear some wave dashing sounds from Sheik as well. <laughs> kind of no, iconic. She's just counting. She can't get past two, though. Yeah. Oh, and it's going to be Jay Walker's DK stepping up to the plate here. Uh, so Jay Walker, I believe in all of the CSL seasons that I got to see him in, was a Fox player. So I'm not sure where the DK comes from, if that's just kind of like a quarantine revelation that this is his calling or if he's just kind of sticking to it for fun like hey you know what man like i'm already here in the top four of this bracket like let's run the dk let's see where it goes like win or lose it's going to be a good time i feel like i'm hearing a dk now so i i expect we are going to be seeing dk chic which yep. is actually the one matchup in their roster that i wouldn't say dk has a pretty good fighting chance like typically falco really really strong against dk but dk has a surprisingly good matchup versus marth weirdly enough at least relative to other characters but speaking of good stuff like wow that is a lot of percent really quickly yep jay walker i believe known for being the anchor of the tamu team so i still would doubt or yeah i would doubt that this dk is not in capable hands right now right like he's certainly killing it at the start and against the likes of heartstrings too oh yeah no dk uh, a funny character because i think People are so used to talking about low tiers in a very negative way and like, oh, uh, this this gets invalidated by X or Sheik in particular is spoken about as a character that just like destroys low tiers. But DK is on that cusp, you know, of being like a pretty good character. Like the stuff that he has that's good is very good. You know, his, his back air, his up air in particular, his up B out of shield can be really strong. He has some stuff to say the least. Of course, the massive reward that you get from cargo throws. That's, I'd say, the one edge he has over Sheik is that the punish game is kind of crazy. You saw cargo up throw up air still working like the well past 100% range on that first stock, too. But the edge yeah, guard no, is absolutely brutal. Yeah, definitely. Sheik has a lot of tools that she can use to punish him. But, like, it's one of those characters where, like, if their punish game is really, really consistent and they have that kind of one tap potential, anything is possible and we're seeing a lot of cute neutral tricks here from jay walker the little wave lands back to make the back air spacing difficult to sort of gauge and it's really going a long way but heartstrings fighting back as we can see oh that grab could have been fatal if he had landed it really loving the wave lands onto or off of 
platform into Falling Bears. That's, you know, really just something DK doesn't normally have access to since he has to wait a little bit to uh, get low for the landing bear, right? And that's just kind of a shortcut to gain access to one of his best moves. Yeah, no, for sure. And we are just in general seeing really, really high level play here. We're seeing a lot of creative movement options. Um, Jay Walker very effectively and fluidly shield dropping through the platforms, baiting out Wavelands, um, making the spacing game really difficult. And we saw Heartstrings earlier using Wavelands in its own creative way with kind of like these Waveland backs into grabs and stuff. So both of them, like, you know, really making some interesting choices in the neutral game. 100%. And 140% before that cargo up throw to up air. Absolutely insane that that still confirms. Like, you don't even see Sheik forward tilts able to combo at that percent on a lot of characters, right? Which is pretty much considered one of the most reliable setup moves in the game. No, for sure. And I think uh, Jay Walker accidentally inputted a, a buffered roll there when he didn't mean to. But this could still be huge damage. Who gets the turnaround on the shield? This is really big. That was a beautiful tech chase. All right, Sheik off the stage. This is where she's the weakest. Let's see what Jay Walker's DK has for this. Is he gonna, okay, just goes into the grab. Takes That's him up to the platform to close it out. Beautiful. Whew. Wow, that was really clean. I, you know, again, like you said, Jay Walker, an established player, someone we know that is more than capable. But again, you, you DK doubters in the chat. You know, people who don't think DK has some stuff. Uh, we just saw an amazing kill confirm there in the cargo throw into up air. It's a really, really good character in a lot of ways. Yeah, exactly. Very polar, right? Like his strengths are so strong, but then his weaknesses are glaring for sure. Um, either way though, now with Sheik out of the picture, Jay Walker's DK is free to do a little bit more damage here. Like you were saying, the other characters on University of Michigan's lineup don't quite fare as well as Sheik against DK. I mean, Sheik really just has like the easy, cheesy stuff on him, the edge guards especially, and like how long and uh, easy her combos are on him. But I think uh, I think they're going to send in Starlight with Falco, right? That like, would you be might my get, guess as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You might get cargoed to hell and potentially zero to death repeatedly, but you could also just not get touched if you keep the lasers up and your shine pressure and your, you know, your aerial pressure is on point. Yeah, I would definitely say that DK versus Falco Falco, if you don't make mistakes, it is one of those like theoretical matchups, I think, where you just straight up win. However, like we were saying, you will you will die if you make a mistake. And mm -hmm. it's fairly consistent and it's fairly forgiving. And someone like Jay Walker is gonna convert in those situations. So if I had like we already said, if we had to guess, I'd probably say uh, Falco is the best choice. But really, if you're Jay Walker, you're feeling like, you know, I can take any of these guys. I can take multiple stocks. I can turn a losing situation into a winning one with the kind of blink of an eye. So it's not looking too bad for the Tamu here. Yeah, they're only two stocks down and they got the biggest threat out of the way, but that is not to diminish the strength of the rest of University of Michigan's roster. So uh, Mushu, of course, we already saw him put on a great show. Starlight had a stellar opening in uh, the first set that these guys played. And then on the other side of things, I haven't seen TZD play yet. I'm curious as to how the puff is going to work. I think that's a great character for Cruz as well, similar to Ice Climbers, oh, yeah. where you get like powerful counter picks. You get, you know, just the ability to close stocks really fast. And then Air, I saw him briefly against UMD, but not um, not like a full match or anything. So really curious as to how like top to bottom these rosters stack up with each other yeah no i i definitely think puff and cruise is very very strong i used to actually started the game with puff and puff's one of those characters that like again you know not to use a commentary cliche but like rest puts certain stuff always on the table in a way and it makes you feel like the comeback potential is kind of always there you know like you get a crazy combo into a rest all of a sudden the stocks are reset they're even and, you know, then you get a little gimp and an edge guard and bam, the momentum's suddenly in your favor. So a really powerful character general, generally, but in Cruise especially, like you were saying, I think just is, is one of the best characters, uh, without a question, you know, in, in, in Cruise. Just a really, really strong character. Yeah, I mean, one of her biggest weaknesses is that lightweight, right? And if you close the game out, you get healed to 0%, like it's all-star mode. So all of a sudden, like, no matter how close they were to closing the door on your stock, as long as you won the match, it's just back to zero, and then you can get another up throw rest, close another one out like it's nothing. Oh, man, 
She's so good in this format, but it does sound like we have Starlight stepping up to the plate. Yeah, one, one thing just to close out the thoughts about Puff though that can be tricky is because, you know, the cliche Puff dies early, it is difficult to get those four stocks, those three stocks mm -hmm. against um, these players just because eventually they get enough percent to kind of get an early kill. It does remind me of that, uh, I think it was the Big House crew battle where Hungry Box had just like an insane terror. It was a couple of years ago where he just like played a crew battle against top players and I think like took something like 12 or 13 stocks. So. Kind of, if anyone remembers that uh, in the chat, they can mention it. There was there was some crew battle. I think it was the big house where he was just dominant. But yeah, Starlight versus Jay Walker definitely going to be interesting. Yeah, it really comes down to if Starlight allows Jay Walker to get anywhere in the arm, right? Because it could go completely off the rails for Falco with one single grab. Jay Walker, one more SD. And right, you so know. Starlight picking Dreamland, a bigger stage, kind of like more room to span the lasers, platform camp, that kind of thing. But that middle section is basically FD. So if you kind of get in there, you can get a couple uh, cargo throws into the center, into then a chain grab in the middle, and then kind of pull up on the platform and get a kill from there. So I wouldn't say it's the worst stage for DK. Yeah, but he's definitely still able to play to his strengths here. And I think the stage being so huge in terms of the blast zones is really good for him. I mean, it's hard to kill this guy just because of the weight he has. Uh-oh, you're done. Wow, one stock already gone from Starlight here. And Jay Walker, you know, being the strongest, most likely player on the team, um, you know, probably their anchor in an ideal situation. The fact that they had to field him early to get rid of uh, heartstrings is actually potentially really scary for the rest of the roster going forward. So he's got to put in overtime here. He only got to take two stocks off of Sheik, but now he's got to take, I'd say, at least another two to just to pull his weight. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, uh, one thing that I have been seeing him do, and I'm curious to see if Starlight will pick up on this, is he is spamming shield grab a little bit. You know, we've talked about how uh, the grab for DK is so, so, so powerful. Really like that slide off back here. There. But if he's getting a bit too antsy with it, you know, you can start to change up your shield pressure option to pum it, punish that immediate grab and uh, really get a lot off of it if you're clever with it. Yep, and we saw the well-timed slow getup from Falco closing the door on that Edgehog. But man, two stocks taking off Starlight already. It looks like Jay Walker is keeping pace. He is taking four for the screw battle. That's really all you can ask of a player on your roster. But um, it's interesting because like Ali J and Jay Walker, after this last stock, will both be gone for Tamu. Yeah, the Jays, so to speak, will have uh, kind of been tapped out, but there's still, you know, a lot of melee left to be played. Uh, you know, the rest of the roster, I imagine, is still quite capable. It is cool to see a DK uh, do this much in a crew battle. Just generally, I think DK kind of a fun character to watch. And, you know, 57%, that's still quite a good amount of room to work with. I uh, managed to get that chip damage without a grab. Oh, but just the wrong kind of spacing and gets clipped by the down air, ending the run earlier than he wanted. Yeah, I was going to say, like, 57%, you're fine to anything other than a spike. And, of course, mm -hmm. Falcos are looking for that at every possible opportunity. We're going to see Starlight land one, end that nightmare. We saw just how far he was able to take every single hit confirm he got. But, man, it looks like University of Michigan is still hanging in there. Two-stock lead. Yeah, no, Starlight, uh, the good awareness to shine stall there and just barely dodge the back air and have the time to kind of counter hit with the dare so uh you know those kind of situational moments where you have the awareness to kind of uh, respond accordingly is how you turn things in your favor you know you're like those situations disappear really quick if you don't act on them so good stuff to starlight uh who do you think we're gonna see kind of in response i could see a mar but you know maybe a puff as well both seem like decent counter options yeah, I think they're both pretty solid choices overall. Probably going to go with the Marth just because it's his counter pick. I don't know if there's um, stage bans in the rule set. We could just see the quick FD. We could also maybe see Yoshi Story Marth, which isn't bad, but obviously not ideal. Okay, yeah, it is going to be air coming in. Ooh, all right. Pokemon Stadium is going to be the stage. Okay, so of course, uh, probably the closest thing you can get to an yeah, FD, basically FD stage light. without having to pick Dreamland. Hmm. No, I think, see, Marth versus Falco is interesting because a lot of people are of the mindset that Falco loses, including myself. But I think it's one of those matchups that's so like well-developed at a high level 
that number one, Falcos practice it a ton. They they get better at it. They try to cover one of their like more difficult mm. matchups, more volatile matchups. And uh, that not num- there is no number two actually. Like that that's the big thing that I wanted to say. That just like <laughs> you know it can kind of go the other way. Oh, also what I was gonna say about FD and to lesser extent Pokemon Stadium is that. Um, the pillar combos can go a long way. The punish game can be really strong. You know, people talk about, would you rather be Fox or Falco? I, I think there's benefits to both, but Falco absolutely can has some stuff. So it should be interesting. Yep, we'll see exactly how it's going to play out. Of course, got to have Starlight drop two stocks at the start of it. And I think just like, even though that lead technically doesn't count, right? Like you're not playing against the timer. It still does kind of send that subtle message that all all Smash players can't really avoid. When you see yourself having fewer stocks than the opponent, you're inclined to be the one initiating, approaching, attacking, and that's when things really go off the rails against Marth because he's just so good at shutting approaches down, taking massive punishes off just the easy stuff, like a, a quick grab. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. I think it's like... It, it's really tricky. I think, like you mentioned, that sort of psychological feeling of like, oh, I'm already down two stocks. And then you think, oh, I hope I don't accidentally like miss space or like run into a, a attack with an air aerial and get CC'd or get grabbed near the edge because it can just be so brutal. Like already seeing exactly what I'm describing. Oh my God. Things looking kind of slowed down, managed to dodge that situation though. But uh, just as I say that, uh, Starlight does kind of get get destroyed by that quick forward air. Looking for the roll in again is air because that is a very, very common roll in. If you down throw there, you kind of have to roll in as Falco or risk losing your stock. And now he's playing the corner quite aggressively. So really a lot of the tempo and momentum in Marth's uh, favor right now. And you could just see the panic that sets into his face's heart when they're against Got Marth it? in the corner, man. Just so tempted to roll in and he's getting capitalized on. Yes, okay, only 34% taken for air. What an insane finish, man, showing that this roster has strength all the way through. So you know how earlier I was saying, like, some people, maybe they're not that top 100 level against every character, but against a certain character, they're very polished. We saw air look pretty good against uh, Falco. I know that, you know, again, a lot of people would say that Marth kind of has an edge in that matchup, particularly in the punish game. But there's no denying that air has got that skill delivered under pressure, which is always difficult and, you know, swinging the momentum of the crew battle quite significantly. Yep. Even in terms of stocks here, that massive lead that Heartstrings was able to create now has dissipated to nothing. So yeah. it's going to be either uh, Mushu or David, right, coming up on the University of Michigan side. And then it really becomes a question of that kind of puff wild card where we got both Falcon and Mark who do, I would say, fairly well against Puff, if not, you know, could even be favored in, in Marth's uh, corner. But sometimes people struggle with that matchup a lot. And so I think some of the decision making might be, OK, which one of us is more reliable versus a Puff, you know, and which one of us wants to go kind of into that Marth space? You know, Falcon can be very strong against Marth. Marth dittos can be very sort of tense. Uh, so I'm really curious who they end up going with in this situation. Yeah, that's why crew battles are so interesting, right? You're not just counterpicking the player that's currently on the screen, but you're trying to manage your resources appropriately for the anchor as well, or at least, you know, for whoever remains on the opposing side, if it's not just the last two that you're talking about. So, uh, yeah, definitely a lot of depth going to go into the choice here. But at the end of the day, they do only have two options to choose from. Yeah, and, you know, it's like you're saying, it's, it's not even just matchups, it's psychological stuff. Who do we feel like um, won't crack under pressure? Who's able to be that kind of anchor? Because, you know, there's just, just different strategic approaches. We've already seen them throw out some of their best players, and they're probably doing that to try to get the momentum or shut down the momentum lead from, uh, like, a heartstrings. But uh, now we do see the Marthido on Yoshi's of all places, so we might see some stocks get shut down at, like, 20 30%. Uh, this is a very volatile matchup, I would say. Looks like they're might, doing a button number, though. Might also see some stocks last to 200%, though. Oh, of course, yeah. the infamous Marthritis does not uh, get any breaks in the ditto where, you know, you're fighting another flow to your character rather than a fast faller that you can set up some dirty stuff on. And it's going to be a lot about just chipping each other out, taking these little ticky tack follow ups, you know, just nothing too crazy in a lot of situations toward that higher percent end. Yeah, no, it, it really is what you're saying. At the lower percents, it's like 
couple of mistakes, they're dead. And then all of a sudden they exit this really like, oh crap, you just got forward smash. Now you're off stage and you're going to get edge guard to like, okay, you're going to get knocked off. You're going to make your way back. And then we're going to hit each other and, and slowly kind of get that side B up tilt or whatever it is that closes things out. And then you reset back to that gimp percent thing. So it's a funny shift as the percent, percents uh, move around in terms of the way the matchup looks, which can be really exciting. Yeah, and when you do close that stock out, the fact that they get reset into the danger zone can mean you mm. have an opportunity to build that ton of momentum, just snatch two stocks away from them, like blindingly quick. So uh, this matchup, you know, it might seem kind of like a little more cold than hot at first glance, but it, the temperature can shift quite drastically. That was like the least looking neutral start I've ever seen. We handed <laughs> them already, you know, gripping him in a grab and gets the quick lead over here. Does air um, already up a stock? And, and you know, yeah, I think you explained sort of the the tempo of the match basically perfectly. You know, once you get that lead, they're already in that percent where things can turn around so quickly. You can push the lead even further. Beautiful tech. Wow, you don't see that very often. This could be huge. Yeah, good on Era, and I also like the downer out of shield from David. That's kind of an underrated move with Marth. I mean, not even just move, but way to apply the move. Oh no, two stocks out the window already. Tamu on pace to win this in oh. one set here. The Roy zone, he just forward smashed him right next to him and it somehow <laughs> did not hit. Air looking really good and some of the kind of small positional errors are really hurting David in a way he does not want. <laughs> Okay, reaches up with the forward air, gets himself back on the stage. You don't want to be on the ledge in this matchup either, man. Like, you could just have that looming threat of an easy big forward smash waiting for you. Oh, I was just going to oh. say, and it, it happened so quick. One of the things that makes Mark so deadly is, you know, he has this insane range, and is that range is so powerful when he's invincible. When he comes down and he's just untouchable for a few seconds it is scary because it feels like there's nowhere where you can go to be safe and in that span of time talking about it air just bopped him like that that was that was rough holy crap. crazy crazy that his name is air because he wouldn't let my man's breathe that was ridiculous <laughs> Three stocked in a blindingly quick fashion. David just looking a little bit outmatched in the Marth ditto there. And now it all falls on Mushu to take seven stocks. Of course, going up against Marth to start. That's a little bit more comfortable territory. You know, Falcon quite good in that matchup. But then he's going to have to fight four puff stocks and just have to not get rested, not get edge guarded. So many dirty little tricks that Puff can pull on Falcon, despite, you know, kind of being outmatched in terms of range, mobility, power, etc. No, for sure. I, I think... If you're a Mushu fan, all is not lost. You know, I think there's a lot of potential. We've seen him uh, not be afraid. You know, you talked about that fear factor uh, isn't really present with him. But, you know, Puff can be really scary. And we've seen Air, like, converting off of certain punishes and situations. Like, I don't know. Like, it, it, I'd love to hear the kind of, like, the, the Discord call, like you said, where is air going guys i'm i'm like the sickest marth ditto player ever do not worry like is that happening because what we just saw was like just nasty like that was crazy so i don't know this has been really good really really good I, i'm really you know I'm pleasantly surprised to see some really sick play yeah, man, the level of play in Collegiate is not to be slept on. I mean, we've seen players like Zane, like Hungrybox, Gatsu, all kinds of monsters just like, you know, maybe not necessarily getting their start in Collegiate, but having roots in Collegiate. So uh, it's good to see that that trend has continued. You know, of course, the next generation of players, when they graduate high school, enter higher education, they're going to be in this environment as well. And this is a great opportunity for them to show what they're made of. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, they're, I don't know, it really, really strong. I think um, the better you get at Melee, the more able you are to identify, like, when someone isn't just getting lucky, you know, when someone isn't just kind of like, oh, situ the situation went well, they want a 50-50, whatever. It's like, no, no, they're creating opportunities. They're converting in situations where you got to have that split-second decision-making. Uh, it, it's just good Melee, it's good play, and it's impressive. So I love to see it. <laughs> Yep, and even when you're not watching like the best of the best, it's still good to follow players' tracks of improvement, you know, see how they develop, not only in the long term, but also just over the course of one bracket. So um, University of Michigan, they've put on a great loser's run for us so far, but is it going to come to an end here at the hands of Tamu, who has remained undefeated? 
Oh, no, for sure. Yeah, I, I think you, you said it best. And you even mentioned players like Zane, who now definitely many would say is the number one player in the world. Um, several years ago was upsetting people like Leffen and like, oh, you're just starting to hear about it. Maybe, you know, Mushu, Air, these guys are going to be people where if you're watching, you're going to hear an upset about them and you're going to be like, yo, I knew they had some stuff because you were checking this uh, broadcast out. So I, for one, am, am going to be checking out these players way more often if I see them in the bracket. This is very impressive. Yeah, exactly, man. A great way to stay plugged in with some of the rising stars is to track the collegiate. All right. Whoa. Air, big forward smash. Falcon, of course, a little bit of meat on his bones. He's going to survive that. And the next forward smash attempt as well. Uh-oh, jumpless. Yeah, there we go. Might be the stock. Oh, get up attack for a little extra flare. Yeah, and that, that get up attack, sometimes, I'm not sure if it was in the situation, you kind of create a situation where I think the, the ECB box for Marth uh, makes it so that you can't, like, get back on the stage because he's, like, too fat. Me Too King did a video on it a long time ago where doing the get up attack is just slightly better than the roll in certain situations. But, I actually did not know that, but it makes total sense. I see M2K particularly do a lot of that. Yeah, like, it's like, it just creates a space where they kind of can't get back where they otherwise would. But um, just as we say that, Mushu hitting a very solid niche should be able to close out this stock right there. And, you know, keeping it fairly respectable after air was like starting quite dominantly. Ooh, just as I say that. Oh, okay. If he can get rid of air right now without losing this stock, which is very possible, then I'm liking Tam or uh, University of Michigan's odds of bringing this one back and resetting grand finals. Unfortunately, though, he is going to die on his uh, second stock here. It's going to be two to four at best, unless air even takes another one. Beautiful reverse knee. Again, Mushu is not afraid as a player, man. Like, there have been so, so many moments where he's like, don't worry, I got you. I'm just going to run in and knee him. And, and <laughs> he does exactly that. Just destroys him in a single hit. Uh, yeah, I'm just watching kind of what the equivalent of a replay on the other monitor and seeing just Erica dash dancing and Mushu running up and just destroying him. So... Good stuff to both players. Air was impressing me there. I, you know, even though it didn't end up going exactly his way, he definitely pulled his weight in this crew battle and keeping things close. You know, that was he has two stocks left, I think, with Mushu does. Yep, yep. So still yes. not completely over for his team whatsoever, but he's going to have to play incredibly well. I mean, fighting Puff with a stock deficit is such a daunting task. Yeah. Yeah, no, so often when you're watching a Puff game on kind of even footing, it's like, oh, is rest on the table, off the table? Now we have like suicide edge guards on the table, really aggressive rest. Obviously, you don't want to be throwing away stocks, and that sometimes can be a Puff problem. You know, if you play too aggressive, you don't want to be missing rests. But there are a lot of opportunities. You can be looking for things like... Um, what crouching under a grab of falcons can lead to arrest and so often people talk about that but as someone who used to play puff like it can be hard if they're being smart about it to like when the opportunity does come there to to capitalize on it because if, if you miss it if the timing's even slightly off like you you don't get it and you have to kind of jump into it but if you're up two stocks you're feeling more confident you're looking for those like free stocks a little bit more so i wonder if we'll see that come into play yeah, you can take a lot more risks here as Puff with this kind of lead. And I mean, the character is just so good at stock trades naturally, right? So mm -hmm. those are not going to be legitimate trades when you're going in with twice as much to work with. So uh, it's going to be tough for Mushu, but is it impossible? Absolutely not. Yeah, and you know, I think if we were watching this game in, say, 2015, 2014, earlier on, I think most people would go... How does Falcon do this? You know, this is a terrible matchup for Falcon. I remember hearing people say that all the time. Now we're seeing Falcons go, I, 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 can, do, I can definitely do this. I have some stuff. We've seen Wizrobe, uh, S2J more recently, doing very, very well versus Puff, showcasing some of Captain Falcon's strengths. I would say his aerial drift, which is basically one of the few characters who can kind of compete with Puff in that kind of mobility. Uh, his up air, his back air, really, really strong hitbox. And of course, knee being very explosive. So, so many sides of Captain Falcon's gameplay can make Puff's life difficult. And it's really exciting to see that meta evolve from where it was even just five, six years ago. Completely agree. I feel like a lot of matchups for characters like Captain Falcon, like Marth, have just really shrunken or maybe even mm -hmm. reversed in the last couple of years. You know, 
stuff like the 20GX movement, the rise of Zayn. People are kind of hitting the lab with these characters that have long been considered some of the best in the game, but they're like, you know what, man, there's a little bit more to this story. I want to explore it and truly optimize or rewrite oh. the book on the characters. Oh, crap. Oh. That is not how you want to start the set. You, you are absolutely right, but we got interrupted by a very, very powerful sequence. Good awareness. Oh my gosh, is this going to be another opening? Looking for those up tilts, looking to close it out, and that should be it! Oh my god! <laughs> wow. Game feed disappearing right in time. Oh man, well congratulations to Texas A&M University for winning the Collegiate Smash Showdown in Grand Finals. Just one set necessary. Didn't even take a trip to the loser's bracket, showing themselves to still be one of the strongest schools in North America. Congratulations to them, Ali J, Jay Walker, TZD, and of course, uh, you cannot forget about Air with that Marth, putting in so much work in that ditto. I'm glad you were there to cover me because I'm still speechless. Like, I feel like we're looking at this match and we're saying, how's the Puff thing gonna go? How are things gonna go generally? What is he like as a player? And then he's like, goodbye. <laughs> like, that was, oh my God. Yeah, good stuff to Tamu, of course. Uh, clearly a powerful uh, university and team. They did everything right, I think. They had the right strategies. They played really, really well. Just cannot uh, sing praises enough for them. But of course, good stuff to Michigan too. You know, they, they had some really solid stuff. Uh, really, really impressive uh, combos and punish game, especially from air. So. Yeah, well, actually, that's not Michigan, but I'm getting confused. But you, you get what no, I mean. No, no, it's cool, man. Era was pretty raw, so I appreciate you shouting him out again. Yeah. And you know yeah, what, man? I, I think uh, Texas is just kind of criminally underrated in Melee in general, but especially on the collegiate front. We saw Albert, who, you know, famously defeated Hungrybox with his Falco at, I want to say, it was Low Tier City in 2019. Uh, he has gotten very strong. I, I think it was University of Houston that he played for. It's not coming to me immediately which school he was part of. Sorry if that's wrong. But, um, you know, players like that have always been strong in Texas Collegiate. So I'm not too shocked to see them take it. But, yeah, it cannot be understated how well University of Michigan performed as well. They started in losers round one, taking an L to University of Maryland, ran it back on them, took it to Grands, and then still put on a pretty good performance, only losing by four stocks to a team that's strong. Can't feel too bad about that. Yeah, and even like a thing I often talk about with Melee is the way you lose doesn't always reflect the stock count. You know, so we saw him get four stock there, Mushu. Mushu, we've already seen, great player. Sometimes you play Puff and that happens. Sometimes you play other characters and that happens, is what I'm trying to say. You know, you get you didn't take the last four stocks. You know, it's not because you're you're trash or something. It just you you know you can like that's the thing I like about melee, and I think people, especially if they're newer, don't understand is you can get three stocked and still be as good as the person you're fighting, right? So uh, it really could have gone either way. But again, congrats to Tammy. That that was really good. All right, guys, thank you all for sticking with us, supporting the broadcast. Please make sure to drop a follow to Even Matchup Gaming on Twitch. Drop a sub if you got it like that, baby. It's hard for tournament streamers. You know, they don't go live with the same frequency as like an individual streamer. So I think a lot of people forget to support them with their primes and the, the raw tier ones and all that. So definitely make sure to support EMG. We've got plenty of good Smash stuff coming up for you in the future. Of course, as soon as live events can resume, we've got your gommels we've got your let's make moves we've got your uh weekly wave type of events uh not sure like what the exact landscape is looking like for ontario locals and stuff going forward but you know whatever is possible emg is going to make it happen for you guys whether you're a canadian player or otherwise so please please drop some support for us and you know if you can't afford to sub right now if you don't have a twitch prime or whatever available tweet out talk about it you know on social media say emg and the collegiate smash showdown was sick you should definitely check this out hit the follow like there are other ways to support that do so so much to grow kind of the scene and grow emg in particular so you know max absolutely right make sure to subscribe that helps so much but you know just get the word out that can really help too